Hello friends, welcome to my next research video. This will give you the tips to prepare your PhD Viva OC PPT PowerPoint presentation and it will give you the detailed tips and that will make you uh, your PhD Viva OC PowerPoint presentation as an effective presentation. And if you want to get more research related videos, please uh, subscribe my YouTube channel and click the bell icon so that you will get a notification when I post my next video further. If you like this video, please don't forget to leave the comments in the comment box and links of my other research video also can be found in the description box. Please make use of it. And this is my YouTube channel. It has a wide range of uh, videos on research uh, topics. Before a Viva OSA, what you need to do? Absolutely, you have to strongly prepare yourself. You have to read your uh, thesis multiple times and you should understand no and corner of your thesis so that you will be able to prepare effective uh, presentation. And very importantly, be aware of your uh, limitations of your research work also because that is where normally people ask you more questions. So if you are aware about your limitation, you can better prepare well when you are doing the Viva OSA. And first thing in the PowerPoint presentation when you start preparing after this uh, reading and the understanding and the PPT, it's a very important tool. This is what you have to going to project it. So be very careful about those things. So just it going, this presentation is going to give you just 10 tips to prepare your PowerPoint presentation effectively. First one, have white background and black font. What I am having in this presentation, similarly, you have because it's very easy to uh, visible. You know, it, it is it, the visibility with the white background with the black font is very high. The people would not get any kind of problem in what you call seeing this thing. So it's a better don't use two, two different colors which is very bossy. The people may not oh no, really oh, look, look at your presentation effectively. That's why better it's a universally better white background block font. And what are the recommended font? There are so many stylish fonts are there but I have uh, uh, listed three fonts in the uh, what you call in the view of readability. That's on a common thing, it, you know, very well. Times New Roman is a very common font. In general, it officially it is used. And Calibri Body, that's another font also, because I have given in the same style also, the Calibri Body or Arial Narrow. You can use any uh, one of these three fonts, which will be really highly readable when you make the slide. And third important thing, maintain consistency in slide design and background in all slides. You cannot have in one slide probably uh, maybe a rectangle, another slide you can have a circle, another slide you can have maybe new picture or one slide you have five line, another slide you have seven line, another slide you have 20 line. No, everything should be uniform so that the, the presentation will be very neat and uniform so that you have to maintain consistency in the terms of slide design in terms of maybe font, in terms of lines or a picture, everything, make sure that you are using certain consistency. Probably if you are using flowers, use only flowers. Maybe it can be different flowers, but one flower, then animal, then these are the things not necessary. In the normal PowerPoint, uh, PhD PowerPoint presentation, don't use any pictures. It is generally you can avoid unless you it requires in your research. Otherwise, better use a plain background. As I already told you, the most recommended one is white background. Another important thing, add slide numbers without fail. Why? Because uh, after your presentation, somebody may ask you the question. That time, if you have the slide number, they may ask you to go, go back to that slide number. It will be very easy to navigate after your presentation. You can show them again what you have done really well. And for the uh, audience also, when they ask a question, it will be very convenient for them to mention the slide number and ask you the question. You can go back it will be very convenient for you also to answer effectively. In case we do not have a slide number, when you have a hundred slides, suddenly somebody asks you a question and it will take a lot of time to go back and search the slide and find it and then giving the answer, it will, it will really bore the audience and they may not like it. So slide number is essential in PhD PowerPoint presentation. And another important thing, do not clutter the slides with too much of information. Somebody will cut, copy, paste the entire paragraph in the, in the slide. And it will be too, too, too many information in one slide. Otherwise, they'll have a 10 lines or a 20 lines. Uh, see, it's very important. Whatever you project, everyone, even those who are sitting at the fag end of the hall should read it without any difficulty. 
in case they find it difficult your presentation is wrong because even when you when you irritate the uh, what you call participant also they may ask you the question in the same irritating way to you so that you have to keep your uh, attendees in a comfort way for that when your presentation is neat and, uh, and a tidy and uh, you know professional they'll get a very good opinion it will add lot of value to your uh, presentation they'll get a very good opinion about you and if you have a clumsy presentation absolutely they feel that you are you have not done the work also very well because they'll get one in that way you could have done a, a whole lot of work in your research but whatever you are presenting in that 45 minutes that is what the audience they'll come to know so if you do not present very well they'll think they'll underestimate that your entire research is wrong so that's why you have to be very careful present it in a neat way so that they'll have a very very positive impact about your work and the sixth tip is you have to prepare your presentation with utmost clarity there should not be any ambiguity in your slide there should not be any ambiguity ambiguous words ambiguous line it should be everything clear utmost clarity you have to present it the way you present it it should be in that level and very importantly because in general you know very well it's a long presentation if you do not to uh, follow the proper flow right from introduction to till the conclusion and the people will not be able to follow your presentation so make sure that you have a perfect coherent flow in your presentation and it has to go one by one there should be a connection between the previous slide to the next slide and probably if if, if required one after the 10 10 slides probably you can give a small uh, one or two lines about what you have so far talked about in that way also you can give a small recap not the entire recap small thing so that it connects the previous points very well so that whatever you are going to talk about next also it will be understood clearly and very importantly lot of people they spend too much of time on introduction and literature review in general it is not your work because it, these are the general information and then you don't time you will not have the time the probably the examiner will ask you to uh, no you you have a very limited time then you will not have a sufficient time to present your original work that is what it happens in the uh, literature what you call after the literature review then you talk about your research design or, uh, or the experimental work or analysis and the findings discussion all those things so you don't spend too much of time this is give, just you can have a detailed presentation but you can give one small intro then you can skip it the same thing literature you can say one or two reviews then you can skip you can go to the main thing what you have done so the people will be very much interested to listen what you have done it they don't worry about what the others have done it so you have to be very careful you should give but not too detailed then you will lose the main time what you need to present in your original work then the ninth tip ninth tip is do not reveal everything in your slides that means somebody will make everything available in the slide then everybody will start reading the slide no you should not allow them to read your slide you should have only cue there clue there then you should they should rely on you to understand what you are going to talk you have to present in a such a way if you everything you presented in the slide it will be one is positive another one is negative because they never listen to you they'll keep on reading the slide they never give the they never listen to you and when they ask the question also it will be very convenient for them to ask question reading your slide but when the when they want to ask question by your presentation you you are presenting most of the thing orally only the effective listener they'll be able to ask you the question because otherwise they'll forget but a lot of people they'll come and sit in the viva voices for the sake of asking question they never listen to the uh, exam what you call the the candidate they simply they ask for the sake of asking they'll ask so you can avoid such questions when you have such a clever presentation you talk many thing and the slide gives certain clue only then you are completely safe but everything majority thing is in the slide you talk less mean than you are caught up so it's it's a big it's it's not a good advice you are unnecessarily inviting trouble so better you have most of the thing you you explain so that you have you can grab the attention you can present in a such a way that you have really done a wonderful work and another mo- most of the time the people find fault that mistakes in the slides probably typographical error or grammar mistakes please make sure that after preparing your slides you proofread multiple times first you re- prepare a rough draft i would say that probably 
you should go minimum 10 drafts of your presentation you initially do something well, first draft then add second draft third draft fourth draft after the five drafts then probably you can give it to a guide then uh, uh, not even before you give it to the guide you can give it to your friends or they will well wisher let them correct it then finally give it to the guide give guide will give you the final correction then after you up uh, what you call correct all the mistakes at the end then you will have a completely final without any error free powerpoint presentation will be there once you have prepared effective powerpoint presentation half of the work in our viva oc is over because once your presentation is neat absolutely people will have a great confidence on you because your neat presentation talks about your work what you have done in the research that's why you have to really take too, uh, no, too much care and preparing the presentation if you follow this these 10 tips absolutely you can make a stunning powerpoint presentation for a phd yoc and you follow this and definitely you will you'll become a winner in your in your viva i guess uh, definitely you like this video if you like this video please do not forget to leave the comments these are the references i have used to make this video and uh, let me catch you in the next video bye bye